No, it's time for well then. <laughs> toys to death. Oh, toys, toys to, to death. death. The toys to life genre has been toyed to death. Oh, wow. Disney Infinity has been canceled, and Disney is getting out of publishing games entirely. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, it's Avalanche actually a sad story. is being shut down. Not yeah, the Just Cause developer. Avalanche, the other Avalanche. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, surely one has Avalanche Games and Avalanche Studios. Studios, and, yeah, studios and games. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there will be two more upcoming sets for Disney Infinity, including characters for Alice Through the Looking Glass and then a Finding Dory playset in June. But no uh, Rogue One playset. We're not going to get that. Yeah, that's such a bummer. But. I think this opens the door to uh, Lego uh, Star Wars stuff appearing in Lego Dimensions. In Marvel. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so Marvel. I, that was going to be uh, one of my questions. Do we think this uh, does it mean happy days for Skylanders in Lego Dimensions? There's less competition out there? <laughs> no, I think it's the, what is it, high tide raises all ships, that kind of thing. I think uh, Disney pulling out of this is, uh, I think, indicative of Toys to Life in general. They're using what's called the pull and pray method. The pull, oh, jeez. <laughs> That's about babies. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, Disney Infinity were the highest selling uh, figures in the Toys of Life uh, genre. And the really? fact that they were the highest selling ones yeah. and that they went out of business, I think. Uh, well, they didn't go out of business. We don't know that. I For mean, some they, reason, it got they just shut down. They pulled out of the business. They, they, yeah. Well, I mean, I think maybe so Disney, not for failings on Exactly. That. Like, Disney is such a massive company. They own Marvel Comics. They own the Marvel Studios. They own Star Wars. Mm -hmm. They own ABC and ESPN. Like, this is Disney. So someone at some executive level made a decision that the video game business just didn't make sense mm -hmm. for Disney to be in, in that capacity. We don't want to be in the business of, you know, making and publishing our own games. We'll just let other people make Star Wars and Marvel's games. And my theory is that uh, uh, Disney Infinity could have totally been successful and profitable, but it got swept up totally. as part of that bigger decision yeah. to, you know, hey, let's just let EA make Star Wars games and someone yeah. else make Pixar games. You also, games you have to imagine that Disney Infinity, it was, it's, it's such an ambitious game. Yeah. Like, each game has, like, yeah. seven studios working on it with yep. Avalanche and Sumo and Ninja Theory, and yeah. these games are so much bigger and deeper than you would imagine from yeah. a, a, a game like this. It was a very different beast than Skylanders. Yeah, totally. Um, which is a bummer because you know Avalanche is like those games have gotten progressively better and better, yep. and those games are a ton of fun. And to see hundreds of people get let go um, at yeah, Avalanche, yeah. Is so like there's, uh, it's it's uh, understandable to feel bad about this or think this is sad or think this spells doom. Uh, but what what if this is just an example of a smart business move? Maybe someone at maybe number of countries at Disney is just like, hey, this bubble's about to burst. We jumped in this industry for a few years. We made good money out of it. Now it's just time to get out. Yeah, I mean that's that's entirely possible too. I mean, do we, I didn't get a chance to look up the stats before uh, scoop, but my hazy, fuzzy memory is that Skylander sales were down year over year. Yes, I believe so. They that, did. Yeah, they had some layoffs too. Yeah. Yeah, toys um, and it's still like I think it's still going strong, and Skylander still sells and you know makes hundreds of millions of dollars. But I, I think I think that the peak of that series is over too. The thing that probably hasn't peaked yet is Amiibo, and who knows about Lego? Yeah, I mean Amiibo is interesting because it doesn't ha really have software production costs. Like it's some Amiibo functionality is built into. Uh, yeah, as tertiary parts of different yeah. games, but there's no Amiibo game. There's no Amiibo game. I think it's really interesting that there there's was Amiibo party. There were four. That's true. There are four Toys to Life products, and all four had like a credible claim to the throne. Um, four? It, yeah, with Lego. There well. was Lego. There was Lego, Amiibo, Skyland, oh, and Disney Infinity. Yeah. So Disney Infinity had that, you know, Disney brands that are, you know, some of the biggest brands on earth. But then Lego is obviously a hugely beloved and popular toy, uh, you know, and has that developer pedigree behind it. Skylanders was sort of the first comer and sort of established a scene, and then Nintendo was doing their unique thing with Amiibo. And like all four, it's just not often that you see, like Guitar Hero and Rock Band are like two sides of the same coin. But I thought it was really interesting that Toys to Life had these four very different takes on the same thing mm -hmm. and all had like a credible uh, claim to say that they were the reason that, you know, they were the one that should come out on top. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, maybe we shouldn't be too surprised. Disney uh, had already announced they won't be at E3. Right. You know, yep. So they were, and they announced there was no Infinity 4.0, or at least not this year. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. What, what about Amiibo? What is what is going on? There's still them? there's I mean, still uh, Amiibo that haven't come out. Yeah. There's still Cloud. Cloud still hasn't come out. I yeah. think uh, the thing is, like, they're tied to releases, as you were saying. Yeah. Like, oh, no. There, 
There, yeah, I mean, there's like a new Animal Crossing game, so there's a bunch of new Animal Crossing. What was the new Animal Crossing game? Uh, Happy Home Designer. And oh, then, but I don't think. And that. then Animal Crossing Amiibo, Fe Amiibo Festival. That's true. There was yeah. Amiibo Festival. I think uh, the future of Amiibo uh, is going to be pretty clear once we see what the NX is. Hmm. I think and Amiibo is deeply baked into that <laughs> console. Yeah, or at least the, the what's it called, NFC, the, yeah. the yep. yeah, near field communication. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so if Nintendo wants to double down on this, and then maybe NX does launch with um, a proper Amiibo game. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, all those toys you've been collecting for two years, now you can put them in this cool game. Which would be presumably like a Skylanders or like a... Yeah, in my mind, it's something like Skylanders. Like, in Infinity was really interesting because it actually, you could scan in play areas and, yeah. and you know, yeah, instead yeah. of just characters. I feel like it would be answers. somewhere in between the two of those in terms of ambition. I mean, I, they've really only scratched the surface of what Amiibo could be. I also think they tested the limits with... Uh, I actually, for a long time, I collected every single Amiibo. I had mm -hmm. all of them, and I still have 40-some on my desk. But then I got out of the scene when they announced all the obscure Animal Crossing ones. Like, I don't need the, the giraffe with the sewing machine amiibo. Like, I don't, like, no one cares about that stuff. And I think my, again, it's sort of, it's based on nothing, but my conspiracy theory is that it was Nintendo testing how far can we really push this in terms of, like, obscure characters, uh, stuff that's maybe not super desirable or in, like, the public eye. But, like, people will buy K.K. Slider and people will buy Tom Nook. But then they're like, let's release these other eight just to see if we can get away with a really obscure, weird amiibo. It's, Nintendo hasn't even really made its own Toys of Life game. No, not no. yet. Right? Like, not a game where the whole mechanic is putting an amiibo on a platform yeah. and there's playing some, with them. There's a lot of the board games have integration like that, but like, mm -hmm. it's. I like, like that Mario approach. Party was really tied to amiibo. Yeah. I like that time. you buy one figure and then it's going to do something for you in like eight Nintendo games. I think yeah. that's super rad. Like, yeah. that's a really clever and cool way to approach it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, yeah, I think that the Animal Crossing stuff didn't work. And those are the Amiibo that you see, like, deeply discounted. Like, you can buy them half off and stuff, and they're still trying to unload them, where other ones are still crazy rare. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was back in 2010, maybe, when Disney canceled that uh, very promising-looking Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. action yeah. Armada, yeah. Armada of the Damned. Yeah, it was like I had played it at preview events, and yeah. it seemed very far along, and it seemed really cool, and then they just canceled it. Yep. Then so, that studio put out the Tron game. Oh, and then yeah. they closed down that studio, although the, their name escapes okay. me. Yeah, I know, what, um, I know what you're talking about, yeah. If you put a microchip inside a toy, they call it Toys to Life, and we have this new food machine here that has food <laughs> with microchips inside of it, which is Food to Life. Food to Life. Food to Life. Mm -hmm. I like that marriage of, uh, I think Toys to Life is a really powerful thing. I don't think it's going to go away, because I think the idea of, like, I have a little girl, I have a daughter, and she plays with little toys. The idea of her playing with the toy and using her imagination, you know, but then later being able to interact with it in a television and, um, you know, have it be this rich interactive multimedia experience, but then still take it with her in the car or to the mall or to grandma's house or wherever and just play with it on the stairs or on the floor is, that's like a kid's dream kind of. You know of, who did like, that one? Connectables. <laughs> Yeah, sort of, um, but they didn't have the figure. They had plushes for Connectimals. Oh, they, did they have plushes? See, yeah, I only remember the digital versions, yeah. but that's like crazy cool, and like there's a version of that with, you know, Captain America, these other characters that's just going to end up taking over the world, mm -hmm. you know, the world of the children's world in another decade or so, I'm sure. Sam, toys to VR. Mm -hmm. Lay some Disney pinball knowledge on us. Oh, there's so many. Yeah? A lot yeah, of Disney. We need more specific. Really? Uh, the most recent one would be Tron. Tron Legacy. That was mm -hmm. a good table. Yeah. Had a cool and of course, I guess you want to count Marvel stuff, but I, I mean, there's there was no, I mean, like Disney recently. properties, like yeah, Alice in Wonderland, yeah, they didn't, they Mickey are, Mouse. There's there a lot of Mickey those? Mouse table. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's a lot of uh, uh, animal like well, well, there would be like fantasy games that like kind of look like Alice in Wonderland, but not the Disney one. Yeah, they're not. They're was definitely there a not involved. But Tron. No. Uh, no, not yet. But we suspect that somebody might have that license. And of course, there's Star Wars and Marvel stuff. Mm -hmm. Of course.